Hi everyone, my name is Terry Beswick and I'm the Executive Director of the GLBT Historical Society. Welcome to the GLBT History Museum. Uh, thank you, I'm so proud to um, have the honor of leading this organization. Uh, what an amazing group we have um, of people and I've just, over the last, actually last week was my two year anniversary in this job. <laughs> my hair used to be dark. It, it, and, uh, so how quickly time flies, I, um, I have so much fun on a daily basis and it's just getting funner. I got to uh, work with an amazing group of people that are artists, um, that are passionate, that care about our culture and that care about our history and that care about the people that are living today. Um, and I'm so excited about this exhibit because it uh, really, it really captures exactly what we have been trying to do over the last couple of years with every exhibit. And this is the remainder of our Outlook exhibit that we're just taking down now, uh, which did used to cover both walls, which was commemorating uh, the Outlook magazine, which is, was, was, of course, a seminal queer uh, theory, mag uh, theory magazine in San Francisco in the late uh, mid-90s. And so uh, we're very proud of that, and that was another wonderful exhibit because, in particular, because it bridged uh, young people with older people um, and people across different cultures and matched up different issues of the magazine with artists that are working today in all different medium and ask them to be inspired by the magazine and go create something new. So I just mentioned that because, you know, so this exhibit um, is building on what we're doing and it's, it's uh, it really uh, brings in opportunities to, for us to broaden our audiences but really to integrate our different communities because the LGBTQ community, and it's getting tiresome to say that, LGBTQ. So I have started saying GSM, gay, uh, excuse me, gender and sexual minorities. It's fewer letters, but, uh, but I, um, and it's more inclusive, I think, so I'm starting to use that more. But I, I, uh, I was really excited when this exhibit was proposed because, um, because it really captures uh, the spirit of of social protest that we're experiencing uh, right now in this country, and uh, and that is so important. It's so um, vital, I think, in this city right now, in in many different ways, both with local politics and with national politics. Um, and it gives us an opportunity to create those conversations about how we can learn from our elders, how we can learn from our people and how we can bring people together that are, are focused on social justice issues that affect us all. Um, so, and I think Angela Davis is really personifies that and is, uh, speaks to my youth and my, my childhood um, as a figure that looms large, you know, and uh, I um, am just delighted that uh, we have uh, community historians, uh, curators who are also activists and cultural activists and social activists that um, recognize that we are making history now and we're making history today and we need to take the time to not just snap the pictures and post it on Facebook but you know print them out and put them in a file somewhere and yes. and yeah. make art and make sure that it's recorded and collected and take the oral histories not just of older people but of younger people because how interesting will it be in 50 years to hear what somebody who is a resistance activist today, working in intersectional community activism, which is kind of like, it's not new, but it's sort of like, it's a revelation to a lot of people, you know. And, and, and I think for queer people, we have such a great opportunity and a responsibility uh, to bridge those different communities and to say, you know, that I am queer and you are queer and you are black and I am white you're Latino and I'm white and let's share our stories and let's take them home to my family of origin or my neighborhood and say we have these common intersections between us and we're all, you know, I, for me, I, um, 
I have my own personal stories and my own personal histories, and I've done my oral history for the archives, you know, and about my activism, and I've made that contribution. And I think everybody should do that because we all have our stories, and it's so important. And um, and uh, uh, so I'm just grateful to Lisbeth for um, Lisbeth Tellison for collecting uh, co collecting these things, and then having the generosity of spirit to share it. Um, and I know that there was a process of of, of, of discovery in terms of, of picking things and also just deciding whether or not to do it and whether it was appropriate and then contextualizing them. And I want to thank Amy Siyoshi for helping to make that happen also, of course. And um, so I'm just delighted. I'm so happy to have you all here. And I'm just going to make one brief pitch for cash. Um, and, uh, you know, we're a growing organization. I think when I started here a couple years ago, we were about a half million dollars. And I'm glad to say that we're at 1.2 this year and that that's not enough. It sounds like it's a lot. We're adding a few staff this year. Um, but we're, we're not growing for the sake of growing. We're trying to build something much bigger. Um, I think we could do a permanent exhibit of Angela Davis, if Lisbeth would let us use some of her materials, <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a museum this size, really, and, um, or a temporary exhibit you know, that focuses on that, um, that would be much larger than this. And so we just don't have enough space to really give adequate voice to all the different parts of our communities. And so um, we've been speaking louder and more aggressively about that with our, our political leaders in San Francisco and on a state level. And I'm excited that we're seeing some understanding of that now um, and that, that we, uh, we have this responsibility, but we also deserve this, this space. We deserve this space. So I am proud of this museum. I see it, uh, I think we're at about seven years now. We're having an anniversary next month. Uh, please come to the party. Um, I see it, I begin to see it as a pilot project for, uh, for what we can do, uh, which would be much broader and much larger. So um, if you can, if you have the means, please join uh, the Historical Society. We have an annual membership, and what it gets you is free admission to events like this, um, and to come into the gallery whenever you want to with a friend, uh, bring a friend in for free, and uh, you can come. we have a lot of very interesting events, pick up our program schedule, and get involved. If, um, so you can continue it in other ways. We have a lot of volunteer committees, and we're always looking for people to join our exhibition working group that uh, helped to stage this exhibition, and many others. Um, and so uh, please uh, sign up if you can. We're at uh, glbthistory.org. Um, higher levels, if you're already a $50 a year member or a $30 a year member, consider joining at a higher level and, um, and get involved. You know, uh, for me, history is resistance, and uh, and that's um, that's that's the message that we're trying to spread through this exhibit and all our work. So thank you very much. And with with that, I'm going to introduce uh, the co-curators, Lisbeth Tellison and Amy Siyoshi. Welcome. And thank you. Thank you all for coming out. I heard from Gerard, this may be one of the largest receptions that we've ever had here, yeah. which is pretty phenomenal. Um, so, I am an archivist and collector, and uh, I have many collections, and I think of them in distinctly. Um, I was the co-founder and publisher of a black lesbian journal called Ache. Uh, back Yay. in 1989, and um, somehow I have ended up with the largest Angela Davis archive probably in the world, and I think of them very distinctly, and when Amy talked to me about doing an exhibit here, we were talking initially about um, a small exhibit that explored the linkages between the gay liberation movement and the black liberation movement and there was real cross-pollination back in the day. And we didn't get deeper into it than that, and so when the deadline got closer, she started referring to it as the Angela Davis exhibit, and I was like, wait, are we talking about the same thing? And I didn't nail it down. And then at the beginning of this year, 
when deadlines got closer, it became clear that they were thinking I was doing an Angela Davis exhibit at the Gay and Lesbian History Museum. And I was, it, it, it was difficult for me. And I spent a lot of time thinking, why is this difficult for me? I've known Angela Davis socially for 30 some odd years. Um, growing up in the San Francisco Bay Area as a lesbian of color, she was firmly part of our community, but she was someone we protected. She was someone who had very little privacy in her life, and we protected her. You know, amongst ourselves, we would debate, did she come out? Was that in every article that came out? Was this the one? And, and you know, when promo started to come out, black, queer, activist, Angela Davis, I was having a response. And I was like, what is this about? What is this about? Is this me because of my generation? Um, am I still protecting her? Is it needless at this point? Um, I, I ended up asking her, I'm like, I, I'm having a response to this. I don't know why. I don't know if I've frozen you in amber, but what, what is your relationship to the word queer? And she's like, thank you for asking. I'm like, what up? Um, she said, I, I'm fine with queer, but I prefer anti-racist and anti-capitalist. I'm like, boom, I can work with that. We got that into the statement. So, you know, as far as this exhibit goes, you know, um, this is an exhibit about intersectionality at the Gay and Lesbian History Museum. There is, you know, save this out cover, there is zero queer content. But, you know, Angela Davis is one of us. And, uh, you know, I really respect that the museum was able to mount this exhibit. Um, you know, in my head I'm thinking, oh, it's so small, we're getting so much promo for such a small exhibit. I think it turns out fabulous and all the people that help mount this and make this happen. Actually, can we have everybody up here who was part of this, making this exhibit happen? No. Elizabeth, come on. Yes, Valeria, yes. Your mom was here from midnight last night. Yeah, where is he? I mean, <laughs> Gerard and I had epic, epic editing battles. And I kind of operate as like the old crank that sits in a room with all my shit. <laughs> and it takes someone like you to actually get me out of the house and make things like this happen. So I appreciate you, hon. Uh, so I just want to say that um, it, was, it was my honor to be able to work with you. Um, I want to really underscore that Lisbeth is an incredible collector. Um, an incredible archivist and uh, just an incredible advocate of history and a uh, queer woman of color. And it's super important that we remember queer women of color as well as black women's contribution to social movements, not just the LGBT, but uh, anti-imperialism, anti-capitalism, a cross-section of different kinds of political movements. Um, so. Please give a round of applause to Elizabeth's collection. I'm, I'm super proud of it. And I'd like you just to remind all of you to please, please support queer history. You're all a part of it. 
Um, the difference in queer, differences in queer history is what makes it valuable. Uh, postcards are only a dollar. You can use them as a holiday greeting. Um, you can also obviously give donations. But buy your gifts here, support the museum, and be a part of queer history. Thank you. Uh, please enjoy the reception. Yeah. <laughs> I think we still have booze and food in the back, hopefully. Uh, if you can catch one of the curators, you might get a dirty tour of one of the cases. Uh, so feel free to catch a curator or volunteer docent, anyone who works in the museum, for more dirt on the cases.